Well, since the age of five, Mick Sullivan has been involved with horses, but it could have been a far different story had he remained fit and healthy with a rugby league career beckoning. I caught up with Mick to explain the situation with his rugby league career and also his involvement in harness racing. Well, Mick, straight off the track after competing in the fourth event. Unfortunately, your drive park run down the track, but the stable mate sat in Ben Yulevin a very nice second. He did. Well, yeah, um, Hannah drove him beautifully. It was a bit unfortunate with the other fellow got stuck going down the back end facing the breeze, and but I was happy with both of them. They sat and went really well, and the other fellow tried hard. Yeah, so. well, Mick, prior to having a look at your harness racing career, I'm keen to have a look at your career in rugby league because it could have been far bigger and better, but for illness. Oh, well, glands of fever, and then I got a bit chalky in the bones, Mike, but I sort of really. From day one, I never had any other way to go because Dad was right into it when I was a young fella and um, enjoyed it heaps and made a lot of good friends with the league. And um, yeah, it was sort of, I think I was ball boy for the Roos when I was about 18 months old running out onto the paddock with Dad was captain coach of the Queen and Kangaroos. And yeah, so I didn't really have any other way to go at that stage. So your dad's had a pretty big influence on your harness racing career and also rugby league because you ended up being graded with the Raiders. Yeah, got, I ended up in the Jersey Flags side, which was the 19s back then. And fortunate enough to play with some really good footballers, one being Laurie Daly. Um, yeah, but made the last 20 for the 21s and then got a fairly bad bout of glandular fever. But I'm not sure how far I would have went. It wasn't overly fast, but probably used to just hold, kick a few goals and hold my own. <laughs> Well, Mick, when you're a front row or second row, you're not supposed to run fast. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. I'm probably making excuses there. So you've mentioned Laurie Daly. So what period are we talking about? 19s. When Laurie first came down from Juni, I think Laurie was still 17. Um, and he, back then he was he was playing first grade for Juni when he first came down. But he was just... Um, well, I will, Bradley Clyde, he came up from the SG Ball as well and played a couple of games with us. So we played with a couple of really nice, good footballers. Um, Laurie was always just had that ability, didn't matter whether it was, um, like he was always captain, he could make a big tackle when you needed it or he'd split them open or whatever, he just he always had that natural ability, it was really good. And we do have a couple of mutual friends including Gary Spears who played in the second row and also the late David Grant who we affectionately called Nana. Yeah, that's right. I met, actually, I can still remember meeting Big Nana in the early days because Dad coached the Raiders for the first three years, the reserve grade. And I remember when he first came, Mum and Dad had a place just behind Seaford Oval and I remember when Big Nana and I think Don Ferdinand might have been with David at the time and came to the front door and I can just remember being a kid and just looking up to him and he was just a massive big human being that covered the whole doorway, you know. Yeah. yeah, he's certainly a big fella. But Gary Spears, he played in the same rugby league, junior rugby league team I did with the Balmain Police Boys. Now, that pack of forwards, Mick, included Gary Spears, Paul Sheridan, Steve Roach, Wayne Pearce, the late Gary Webster, and I'm leaving out a few names as reserves and also some backs. That wasn't a bad forward pack for a junior league team. I don't think I'd like to come up against them. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mick, let's have a chat about your harness racing career. As you mentioned, your father had a big influence on your harness racing Involvement, Dad, Dad and Mum, they, they always steered me in the right direction, whether it was with rugby league, cricket, or the schooling, or the horses, or buying a property at an early age. So was, I've been really lucky there. Dad's always had a good name around Queenman with the rugby league. And yeah, so I've been really fortunate. Mike, yeah. As a five-year-old, you were no stranger competing at the Queen Bean Showgrounds. No, we used to. They used to bring the horses in. We were out at Barra at that stage, about 16 mile the other side of Queenbeam. And we used to fly around the old Queenbeam track, which is no longer there. But yeah, it's a good experience. Look, the old Billy Smith and Ken Price and people like that in the day, yeah. You were very adapted carriage driving, the harness horses, and also riding. Yeah, that's right. I didn't do a real lot of riding. I've done a little bit when I was really young, but yeah, always been in the horses, enjoyed the horses. Also very much an involvement as far as the family was concerned, in particular you in the last 10 years, so the Bega showground. Bega, we always, we've got a couple of good mates down at Bega that have had horses and we've always tried to go there, we go down there to the show annually if we can, we missed a couple of years because of the COVID, 
but people down there they just love it and they don't see it and it's only a small circuit down there we don't go too hard we're just about three or four in a race maximum and uh, just try and keep the game on show you know you made it consider yourself to be a harness hobby trainer yeah hobby trainer still still do quite a bit of plumbing maintenance plumbing so but i enjoy it i've probably got a few too many at the moment the plumbing's starting to get getting it a little bit harder and harder to be reliable yeah. and Harry, would you would you consider being involved as far as your stable is concerned um i've got well, there's, there's six. I've got six in work, Mike. Um, I'm, yeah, I've just got Stormy Raider back. That's been with, he was with Dean Sonofskis. Done a really good job with him. He, he was consistently racing down. Here. He's always had a few problems, but he's he's been a real good buzz for the family. Well, we've had nice horses as far as the family is concerned. Ragtime boy, a long way to the top. He's a mountain man, just to name a few. Yeah, we've been lucky. But he's a mountain man. Was probably the pick of the horses but he always had bad he had two bad front tendons i'm pretty sure he could a lot of fellas even said that he could have been a grand circuit horse if he was fully fit yeah which is a bit of a shame but anyway done a good job now well there must be a little bit of a story behind horses like don't call me crazy and uh, nowhere near crazy some of the the original don't call me crazy was a couple of probably suited two or three owners that we had in the horse so fairly a bit of they liked to party and they were pretty wild sort of fellas so yeah, that's how that come about. Yeah, Mick, being born and bred in Queen Bend, still a very keen Raiders supporter. Love the Raiders. Yeah, still love love the Raiders. Um, follow them fairly off. Don't get a chance to go to the games as much as I used to, but I still follow them fairly solid, yeah. And when you do, you must enjoy the uh, Viking clap. Oh, <laughs> actually, you can, you can hear it from the Bruce Stadium. You can hear the clap from the Exhibition Park at the stables, yeah, so it's... It's good player. Provides a wonderful experience, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it's great. It gets everybody pumped up before the game. You might have to start doing that with the harness horses get out there doing the Viking clap. <laughs> One of these fellas here today, Park Runner, I don't think he'd handle it too well. <laughs> It'd be great to catch up with you and uh, good luck with the harness horses and good luck with the Raiders for the rest of the season. Good on you, Mike. Thanks very much.